Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Skills and Abilities. Uh, today we have another request from another uh, member of my community, and the request was Lightning. Uh, so Lightning is a very powerful ability uh, that Sorceress has that has some very interesting effects. And uh, I'd like to take level 1 Lightning out here real quick just to show you. Um, and the way that Lightning works is that it is a straight line attack... And that straight line attack will go on for quite some time. Um, the beautiful thing about lightning is that it will literally hit every target within that straight line attack. Um, but the downside to lightning is that um, it will hit every monster in that straight line attack. It's kind of like a catch-22. Uh, it's not really a conal attack. It's not really a, uh, a like an AOE attack. Uh, like its predator, like its uh, its its neighbor, uh, chain lightning. Chain lightning is a AOE attack which hits multiple targets multiple times, uh, whereas lightning will technically only hit any target one time. Although if used properly, you can theoretically hit a lot more than just one target. Now, when it starts out, it's not particularly high on damage. Um, it has a charged bolt. Uh, synergy, a Nova Synergy, and a Chain Lightning Synergy, which means that if you want to max this out, you're going to have to put in 20 points into Lightning. You're going to have to put in 20 points into Charged Bolt, 20 points into Chain Lightning, 20 points into Nova, which is 20, 40, 60, 80, which I don't even have enough points on this character for some reason. Um, why am I missing points? That is... I only have 70 skill points. That is uh, kind of silly. Let's go over to my other Sorceress. Why does my level 99 sorceress only have 20 skill points? I'm a little, I'm a little worried at that. That that is a little worrying. Um, I do have my other sorceress here though, uh, Talrasha. Talrasha. Um, so if I sh reset her real quick, and we're gonna beef up lightning, we're gonna beef up chain lightning, beef up charge bolt, beef up Nova. Oh, sorry, that's static field, not Nova. I am a big silly hat. Although if you did want to beef up, um, if you did want to beef up uh, Nova, you could beef up Static Field because it definitely has a five percent synergy now, which is pretty cool. All right, bink, 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 and bink. All right, so then we have our maximum lightning. Now the problem with this is that we also need mastery. So we're going to need uh, maximum mastery, which is going to give us a huge bonus. So we're looking at 20, 40, 60, 80. 100 points to max out lightning. Now, lightning has 4 to 10,611 damage, which is a really kind of massive amount of damage. But as I said earlier, it's only a straight line attack. So it's only going to hit the targets in a straight line through the lightning bolt. It also gets stopped by, uh, by obstacles, as you can see, which, uh, of course, doesn't make things any better. But if you line your attacks up right, if you if you put your character in the right positions, you can definitely kill more than one target at a time. Um, the other downside to lightning, which is not just the fact that it is a straight line ability, but that it tends to do no damage. So it has a really high, very ridiculous variance. The variance on lightning is literally between four, as you can see, to 10,611. Which means that there are occasions when you will fire off a lightning bolt where it will literally only do four damage. And you could literally fire one of these massive, you know, like level 25 maxed out synergy lightning bolts in a normal difficulty setting, and there is a chance that a monster might not die. Um, this variance is actually uh, kind of like a gambling system. Uh, when I was playing on a different MMO called uh, Lord of the Rings Online, I had a character called the Captain. And the Captain could hit really, really hard, but he also had a chance to hit really soft. And, uh, and I lived for this adventure of going into PvP and just wailing on people and seeing if I could get multiple crits in a row. And if I did get multiple crits in a row, then the damage would be absolutely insane and through the roof. But there were also times when I literally got nothing. And I mean nothing. Um, I would just do like absolutely no damage whatsoever. So when you think about lightning, um, there are a lot of synergies with lightning. Um, it's a pretty crazy ability. 
and uh, and quite honestly all the synergies involved in lightning usually end up meaning you have a bunch of other abilities at your disposal and i know this video isn't about those abilities specifically but i feel like if we're going to talk about lightning we should at least talk about the synergies that you're building the process now charge bolt is a great one um, that is required to build the lightning synergy and this one is a uh, ability that does a lot of damage per bolt with a lot of bolts and, uh, and if you multiply out the bolts you can usually do a lot of damage with charged lightning especially if you shotgun it directly in someone's face like this because all the bolts will hit them at one time you also are going to be forced to build chain lightning and chain lightning is a fun one because it travels between targets um, so it is not like lightning it does not pierce but it does travel between the targets so it will hit multiple targets at once um, and it sh basically it will bounce a certain number of times. In this particular case, it will bounce 10 times. So if we run out into a zone like this, you will notice that the lightning bolt will kind of just travel around between the targets, hitting every single one once or twice. Now I have noticed in the past that chain lightning tends to be a superior option to lightning in certain situations um, where monsters are more spread out, whereas lightning tends to be the superior option in situations where the monsters are more focused. Um, you also have to put points into Nova, and Nova is actually a very fun AoE ability, although it doesn't do a lot of damage. It does tend to be kind of a fun one in general for, um, for dishing out large amounts of damage to large amounts of monsters. Um, it is not one that is going to kill most monsters in one hit, because it only does about 1,000 damage, whereas Lightning does 10,000. So you're going to have to hit about 10 times to do the same amount of damage that Lightning does. And this is, uh, of course, kind of a, a downside. And... Um, Quite honestly, um, if you wanted to build Nova specifically, you would probably want to get 400% faster cast rate and, uh, and things like that to really facilitate it. Um, and on top of that, we also have new synergies for Nova. So they are synergies with Static Field. So uh, if you build Static Field with that, you can get pretty good use out of it. Now the problem with building Maximum Lightning is that you notice that uh, it costs us, what, 20, 40, 60, 80... 90, 100. So 100 points, you only have 115 basically at level 99. So um, so we only have like 15 points left to spend in other things. Um, and if you calculate out, you know, what you would spend out those other points in, I mean, here's one, two, right there, three, you definitely want at least one point into warmth. So there's three points, and then you probably want at least frozen armor, so that's four. So you've already got four of your 15 points spent right there um, and then some people will probably uh, want to dual spec so you're probably going to want to go down here and at least grab uh, frozen orb so that's four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and at the very best you might be able to get like level 12 or level seven frozen orb uh, with no synergies which is, um, yeah, not very good. Now, of course, you can put some points in here. Let me get these uh, plus the skills run in here. Um, another thing that you need to note is that lightning has its own faster cast rate. So lightning and chain lightning actually have different breakpoints than skills like, uh, for instance, um, glacial spike. So glacial spike and lightning are two different breakpoints. Um, and I demonstrate lightning really effectively in uh, in my faster cast video. If you guys would like to take a look at that, I talk all about how faster cast works. But this is 200% faster cast lightning. Notice how there's no gap in between the lightning bolts that you can almost not even tell where the first lightning bolt starts and the second lightning bolt ends. Um, so you know you can't really see the beginning and the end of the bolts. Now if I take off my faster cast. Um, and I show you what it looks like for a bottom tier faster cast uh, bolt. Notice how there's a pretty big gap in between the bolts. So lightning had, does have a, quite a nice bonus for faster cast, especially if you're going to be doing something like uh, like Nova. Nova is ridiculous with faster cast, and it also costs a lot of mana too. So you're going to need a pretty healthy amount of uh, of mana regen. As you can see, I burned through all my mana in about like a second. Um, 
honestly, when it comes to lightning, lightning is just extremely powerful. Um, in damage, it hits really, really hard like a Mack truck. And this is one of the reasons why the Gloams and the Black Souls are so ridiculously powerful. Is because they really can just rip your HP down. Um, they're dilly dishing out so much damage in a single hit that it's very hard for your resistances to keep up. In fact, you know, I feel like that's probably something that we should take a look at. So uh, let me pull up a calculator real quick here on screen, and uh, and we're going to do some quick calculations just for the fun of it, and um, hopefully it'll give you guys an idea. So let's assume we have a 10,000 damage bolt coming in at our head from a freaking black soul. Uh, we have, I don't know, 80% lightning resistance, so minus 80% on the lightning resistance. They're still doing 2,000 damage, uh, and I, I doubt you've got 2,000 HP. Um, and then maybe we also have 20% uh, absorb added in. So minus 20% is the absorption rate. So we're still going to take 1,600 damage. And then after we take the 1,600 damage, we will get healed for 400. And this is one of the problems with absorption that a lot of people don't know, is that you have to take the damage. Okay? If you don't take the damage, it cannot heal you. The healing happens after you take the damage. So if I don't have 1,600 HP, despite the fact that I have 20% absorption, I'm going to get wrecked by this. I'm going to get wrecked. It's just going to wreck me entirely. Um, and this is one of the reasons why lightning just does so much damage in general, because it just doesn't really like it care about your resistances and stuff like that. Now, you can, of course, make this work. So, like, for instance, if you were a uh, paladin who was running 95% lightning resistance, and maybe you also had 20% absorb, uh, let's run those same calculations. So, 10,000 minus 95% brings us down to 500 damage minus 20% absorption brings us down to 400 damage, all right? And then uh, after we take that 400 damage, which I'm sure we will be able to, we minus that again, another 100, as the absorption heals us, which means that 10,000 is now only 300, which is much more agreeable, just in general. Um, you also have to calculate in, like, raw absorption numbers, too, if you have, like, raw lightning absorption, or if you have magic damage reduced by, things like that. Those will also take effect. And, uh, and in general, um, magic damage reduced by flat numbers tend to work very well against small damage numbers, uh, whereas percentage obviously tends to work better against large numbers. And um, if you have a combination of both, they can actually work pretty well together. Like, say, for instance, you took that same 10,000, uh, minus your 95% resistances. And then uh, let's say we had, um, I don't know, 20 absorb as well. So minus 20%, minus 20 absorb, minus 100 for the heal, and then minus 20 again for the absorb. So we have the absorb and the absorb percent both being calculated, which means we go down to 260. Um, now the exact calculations for this are a little bit more kind of, ex you know, exact. Yeah, they have to be in the correct order and everything. Um, Cyclone armor, for instance, is before everything. and does not get absorption. Um, most absorption is going to require, at the very least, you to have um, the HP to be able to take the damage. And um, let's see here. Um, energy shield goes before absorption as well. And uh, resistances don't apply to energy shield or cyclone armor. It's a, it's all a very uh, interesting calculation. Uh, what else is there to talk about with lightning? I want to make sure that I cover everything before we finish this video. Um, there is definitely a lot of interesting things about lightning. Um, it is utilized by quite a few characters or monsters in Diablo 2. Uh, most notably uh, the Gloams, obviously, but it is also utilized by the uh, the Fanatics, I believe, or the, the Zealots. I can't remember the exact name of those monsters. Um, those monsters can fire off the lightning as well, and they also have access to Blizzard. Um, they're a pain in the butt in, uh, in Trap and Call, as far as I'm concerned. And um, other than its straight-line type attack, which can be a downside in certain scenarios, um, and the fact that it is, of course... A, um, a very highly variable spell. Um, it is actually a very devastatingly effective spell also. Um, the last thing I think we should go over is the resistances.
So uh, one thing we have to talk about is breaking resistances. And uh, for that purpose, I'm going to put these formulas up on the screen. You may have seen them before if you've, uh, if you've joined me at any time. But these are the resistances that you... Um, oop, not that one. Uh, that you might be interested in. So what this does is it kind of goes over with you um, how conviction, low resistance work, and the ability for them to break attacks or break elements. The thing is, is that conviction and lower resistance are not exactly super easy to come by. Um, and, uh, and these are the only effective ways to break a resistance. But lightning is one of the easiest to break resistances in Diablo 2. Um, cold is almost never breakable. Um, I've, I've uh, come across like less than 10% of the monsters in the game can be broken with cold immunity. Um, in fact, most of the time I don't even bother to attack any monster with cold, uh, even on my Vengeance Paladin. And, my, uh, and to, to really exemplify this, because most of you out there are going to be using an Infinity. That's, that's what you're thinking when you think about Conviction. And Infinity is only 17% redu reduction to immunes. I'm running a fully geared negative 150% Conviction Paladin with level 7 lower resistance uh, spamming off of Medusa's gaze and cold res I mean monsters still never break. Now fire breaks all the time but lightning is by far the easiest to break and, uh, and usually when you can't break lightning it's because of monster modifiers and uh, those are right here so if you've ever taken a look at a monster's name and you've seen stone skin that is physical resistance if you've seen fire enchanted cold enchanted lightning those are straight lightning fire cold you know resistant additions uh, magic resistant is 40 percent to fire cold and lightning spectral hit is 20 percent to all three and basically what happens is, is if a monster has an innate resistance of say like 50 percent and they spawn with lightning enchanted, then they have 50% plus 75, which brings them over the 100% cap. Once they hit 100%, they are considered immune. Once they hit 99%, they are no longer considered immune. So keep that in mind. Another way that you can bring down the resistances of monsters is effects called negative enemy lightning resistance. Um, so if you see on Talrosh's lidless eye here, we have negative 15% enemy lightning resistance. This will not break immunities. But when the monster's immunity is broken, even if it's only by 1%, even if you've only brought them down to 99%, these, these can take effect from that point onward. Um, and the reason why people love to pick lightning is because it's very easy to break lightning immunes. And usually when you do break lightning immune, you can stack on the enemy lightning resistance in multiple forms. And you can really rip down a monster's resistances to a very low level. Uh, there are a lot of items in the game that have negative enemy lightning resistance. Uh, there are lightning facets. There is the Griffin's Eye Diadem. There is obviously the Talrosh's Swirling Eye Crystal. Um, there is also... Um, the Infinity Pole Arm, which has a really nice negative enemy lightning resistance on it, as well as Crescent Moon Axe, which is a one-handed item, uh, Rune Word, that also has a really nice negative resistance on it, and is actually pretty good, believe it or not, for uh, for sorceresses uh, because of the negative enemy lightning resistance. It's not even meant for that character, but the negative enemy r lightning resistance is so powerful that it's kind of hard to pass it up. And, uh, and to give you an idea of what I mean by this... Um, <laughs> Uh, let's go back to the calculator again, because yay, calculators! It's a calculator. I got a calculator. All right, so let's pretend you had a monster um, who had, I don't know, uh, 10,000 health, right? Um, and you hit this monster for 10,000 damage. So he's going to take 10,000 damage, right? Well, no, because he's immune. All right, so he's immune to all resistances, uh, or, or lightning resistance, which means he takes zero. Okay, but you have a, I don't know, you have an infinity pole arm. You've brought him down by 17% resistance. So he's gone from, let's say he was at 110%. Uh, 
uh, re lightning resistant, which means he's immune. You bring him down by 17%, which is the uh, infinity polearm, and now he's at 93. But you don't have any additional negative lightning resistance, so he's at 93% lightning resistance. Um, and you hit him with the with the 10,000 damage lightning bolt, and it hits for 10k too. It doesn't even hit for four or half of that. It hits for 10k, so he's got 10,000 life, and you hit him for 10,000, but you got to subtract 93% from that, which means that you only hit him for 700 damage, which is pretty pathetic. Um, and if you divide that out by 10,000, it's going to take you um, quite a large number of, uh, of hits to, uh, to kill him, because that's only 0 0.07 of his HP. Now, if you had negative enemy lightning resistance, like for instance, even just the negative 15% that's on the Talrosh's crystal, um, that is a different story. So you go from 110 minus 17, which brings him down to 93, minus the 15 on the crystal, which brings him down to 78, and then we take 10,000 minus 78%, and now we are at 2,200 damage, which is a heck of a lot better than the 700 that we were getting with just conviction. So you start to understand how the Crescent Moon, even if it doesn't give you any plus to skills, even if it doesn't give you anything specific that you would need on your Sorceress, that that negative enemy lightning resistance is absolutely huge to increase your damage against a monster who would otherwise be relatively immune to your attacks. Um, I think I've gone over lightning enough, really not a lot more to say about lightning, except for the fact that it's a pretty awesome ability. Um, I would recommend that you look up the special faster cast breakpoints specifically for lightning if you want to build lightning it does not share the same faster cast breakpoints as you know fireball and, and meteor and so forth and so on um, so you know take that into account as always I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos and uh, keep watching